Hello everybody. In this short video, I want to show you how you can use software on Docker. Docker is just a great way for software developers to package software in a way so that it's easy to run on Windows, on Mac OS and on Linux computers without them having to change anything. Now, as a user or as a developer, I recommend that you don't spend too much time reading up on what exactly Docker is because you don't need it to use or even develop software in Docker. What I recommend you do is you simply enter Docker in your favorite search engine and then you click on Docker Desktop here. Now, you don't need Docker Desktop. What you need is the Docker engine and then the extension Docker Compose, but Docker Desktop packages this easily and it also provides a really minimal, nice interface, a graphical user interface where you can see which applications, which are called containers in the Docker language, are already running. So on this download button, you just select the operating system that you have, which is Mac, Windows or Linux, and then you press download. And now that this is done on my Apple computer here, I simply double click the docker.dmg file. I drag over the Docker icon into the applications folder. I wait until this is done copying. I do a bit of cleanup by moving this into the trash. And then I go to this launch pad and open the Docker application at least once. It will ask me if I'm happy to run this and I am. And then on Windows, it's essentially the same. Just open the installer that you just downloaded from the Docker website. You can accept all of these defaults. Do a quick restart. Then move the installation file to the recycling bin. And now here you should have a Docker desktop shortcut on your desktop, or you can find it in your launcher. You don't actually have to sign in or answer the survey. And now the Docker engine is starting and you're ready for the next step. And now here on Ubuntu Linux, we don't really need Docker Desktop. We can just install Docker Compose and this will also automatically pull Docker. Unfortunately, the version on apt is a little bit too old. So you want at least a Docker Compose version v2 and the people at docker have already noticed this and set up their own app repository so you can head to this website which i will link down below and you can copy this entire command run it to add the repository and then scroll down a little bit to install docker and all the relevant dependencies and then if you're like me on a cool Arch-based Linux distribution, you can simply open the terminal and enter yay docker to install docker. And then yay docker compose to install docker compose and that's it. And now what kind of software can we run with this? I've prepared this little GitHub gist here, which contains a, I've prepared this little GitHub gist here, which contains a Docker Compose file that lets you run Olama and Olama Web UI. And I will show you in a second how this looks like. And to run this, you simply want to copy the wget command here, which pulls down the docker compose.yml. And then you want to copy this command here, docker compose up minus D. And if this happens, you want to write Docker Compose without the hyphen. And if the access is then denied, you can simply add a sudo in front of this. And the images are being pulled and the containers are being set up in the way that are defined here. And then on Windows here, you might not be familiar with the command line, but it's a really convenient tool to run applications. And in this case, we really need it. So you want to type in PowerShell in your launcher and open this. And then we can try the wget command. Now, if your output looks like this, it means that something didn't work right. You don't have the right version of wget, but no problem. You can simply scroll up and hit the raw button here. And then you either right click and save as, or you hit control and S 
and save it to your downloads folder. Now watch out because when you download a file on Windows, it will often add a .txt or .some other thing to your file and then Docker Compose won't work with this file anymore. But it actually looks normal in your download folder. So you want to click on view, show, and then file name extensions, and then rename the file so the name is only docker-compose.yml. And then once this is done, head back to the gist, copy this, docker-compose, up, minus D, and Docker will start pulling these images and setting up your containers. On macOS, it's pretty much the same. I head to the launch pad and I search for the program named Terminal. Or what I can also do is in the finder, I head to the downloads folder, I hold down control, and then I click on the downloads folder and say, open new terminal at folder. If you don't see this path down here, you can go to view and you can select show path bar. And then when this is open, and then we type in the command docker minus compose up minus D. Now this specific Docker Compose is optimized for machines running a GPU. If you don't have a machine running a GPU, then you need to open this in a text editor. So we can just open this in Notepad or RStudio or Notepad++ or VS Code. And you want to comment out or simply delete these lines that enable GPU support. I'm saving this and this time it worked. The containers Olama and Olama Web UI are running now. What can you do with them? In the gist, there's an address here, HTTP, localhost, and then 3000. If I enter this into a browser, or if I head to Docker Desktop, then I see there are now two containers running here, and we want to grab the Olama Web one. There is also a link here that you can click. I'm greeted with the Olama sign-in. So this is not running on the internet. This is running locally on your own computer. You can simply create an account here. Download the model like Llama 2. Then you can select it on top and you can start asking questions. I've got another video explaining more about Olama, which is linked up here. But this is basically it. You've downloaded the software. You, do you can download a lot of other software and then it's running sandboxed in. It can't hurt your computer and you can remove it very easily by simply removing the containers. And as I said in the beginning, it shouldn't matter whether you started this video using macOS, Windows, or Linux, you should be at this exact same screen now.